All right, so it says we are now live streaming on Facebook. All right, so welcome, 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 everyone. So excited uh, to have everyone here today uh, for uh, our double feature event. This is a, a mashup we do between The Word is Right and between Red or Green Books uh, to celebrate our 2023 debut poets. Uh, so you will find uh, that uh, not next Friday, but uh, the second Friday in May, uh, y'all like seriously, um, I thought I was organized, but I have lots of different spiral notebooks going and I just filled up the one that had those dates. Uh, Friday, uh, Friday, June 23rd will be Alexis Garcia and Tabitha Adams. Uh, Friday, July 7th will be Karen uh, Garibrandt and Kimberly Adana which will be amazing. I am still waiting for Nico, Kim, and Marcos um, Cervantes to let me know uh, when we're going to be doing their features. So there's a, a lot coming up uh, soon here at The Word is Right. Uh, let's see, okay, uh, tomorrow night, y'all, tomorrow night. And Stacy, I'm putting this bug particularly in your ear. Uh, tomorrow night here at Word is Right, we are featuring solo artists, solo featuring um, Jessica Helen Lopez from Albuquerque right here, uh, where Rich and, and Arlena and I are from. She is seriously one of the greatest Chicana poets there is in the world. Uh, and she lives right here and she's just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and Teresa yeah, is here as well in Albuquerque. I love that there's so many Albuquerque poets tonight, right? It's so it's so exciting for me. Um, so you gotta come back tomorrow night for Jessica Helen Lopez. Uh, if anything, come for her feature. If you don't wanna read, uh, come and soak it all in uh, because she's amazing. All right, Poetastic, I see uh, you are wanting on the list, so I got you. All right, uh, don't forget, and for some reason, my chair keeps like sinking back down. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't, I don't know, I, I don't know. Anyways, this is, this is this is it, right? Yeah, Jess Cullen, she's amazing. Yeah, Nancy Helgeson. Oh, so we got five New Mexico people in the house uh, tonight. That's right, Nancy Helgeson is here as well. So, 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 so much. Uh, keep coming back. Uh, the first Saturday every month, we have Poetry in a Movie. Uh, myself and uh, Poetastic help uh, host that. The last Saturday of the month here, we have Karaoke Night, and we did it with Terry Rose Dirt. She's, she's our new host, and it was so much fun. And then we all finished on one big queen ensemble. It was great. So if you like karaoke, if you don't like karaoke, you just don't know you like it yet, uh, come and try it. It worked great. It was a wonderful, wonderful, fun show uh, and a good time. Uh, yeah, so there's lots and lots and lots of things coming. If you have not got your tickets yet to come to New Mexico in September, get your butt busy, uh, because we are going to have our Poetry Summit the 8th, 9th, and 10th of September. Stacey Dyson will be here. Uh, so many, we, we have 20, 21 headliners now uh, signed up to come read. Jeff Cottrell's coming in all the way from Canada. Uh, so it's a, it's a crazy awesome. Rich Boucher, who's in the room, he's going to be one of the feature readers. Uh, so much fun. Uh, AJ Houston's in the room. He's coming from Las Vegas, Nevada. So yes, uh, it's going to be just a superb, superb event. All right. So tonight uh, we have our double feature open mic. Uh, we have Shaki G and Rita Zahir are featuring. I'm so excited to bring these two women on in front of you. Uh, if you have not heard them, you are in for a treat tonight. Uh, talk about my <laughs> oh, Rich, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so you, what I like to do on my show is I go about 15, 20 minutes, and then I bring the first feature. I go back to the other minutes, and then I bring a feature two, and then I finish up the other list. I usually go back to is in the first, and that would be uh, Rita. As, as tonight, or there's a scheduling conflict. I'm breaking up. Oh man. All right, let's see. All right, is that better? So, so usually what I do when I'm running these, when I run the show, is that um, I go about 15, 20 minutes on the and then I bring first speech. And then each has skin less. I'm not gonna keep anyone. Don't want to. 
uh, that's going to be open mic list. Uh, the I usually pick uh, the featured order by who is in the room first, and so that would be Rita, unless Shaki has something that she needs to get to, some pending business to take care of. Uh, otherwise, uh, that will be the order of go for our features tonight. The open mic list, I got Jeff Koshkel, Arlena, Fushia, Teresa, and Ed Potastic. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anyone in the chat. If I did, uh, let me know. But the chat goes kind of fast for so hopefully it uh, it is not. Hopefully that's the list. All right. I know Mark States is in the room. Mark States is going to be a, a, an upcoming feature at a time and date to be determined. Uh, but if he wants to read, uh, I think you would be blessed to hear from him. Uh, also, I see A.G. Houston's in the room. Uh, you would be blessed to hear from him as well. Of course, Stacey Dyson, if she would, wants to read, she she certainly can. Uh, she leads to Soto, our worldwide women's organization. Uh, so if if we are lucky enough, maybe she will uh, grace us with a poem. But certainly, she is a busy woman and uh, does not always have to read everywhere she goes. All right, so then that's it. Uh, oh, Nemo, Nemo's here too. If Nemo wants on, if he wants to read, he's more than welcome to drop his name and put put that on the list. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead. Let's see if it'll work with my, my camera on. I don't know. That. Technology sometimes is not my friend. Hmm? So we appreciate it, Alvin. I missed it. I missed it. You sounded I, like I a missed. pit monk, so I said, we appreciate it, Alvin. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. All right, well, thanks, thanks, Shaki. Uh, I can laugh at myself for sure. No, no problem on that. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn my video off and read you this piece. Uh, this is a poem. If I decide to publish my micro collection uh, later this year, this poem would be included in that book, and it is titled "Red Card," and it is uh, from a workshop actually I did here in Albuquerque. The body keeps score. It remembers every kiss, every slap, every apology, every cut and bruise, when we cry and laugh, when we dance and fall, skin our knees, the cold shoulders and disease. The body keeps score like a tree. It keeps careful record of the world around it, every drought, every rainy season, every infection and infestation, the environment counting on its catalog to go back and figure out why the forest up and quit. The body keeps score, every hurtful word welded to our bones, torch in hand, sparks deliver showers of sharp fiery reminders that we are permanently incomplete now dissected decisions that the disease should be expelled through bone loss holes, drilled to repair the ability to handle the frame of humanity. My body keeps score, keeps a Rolodex of woes on file, spins like a 30s street corner newsy and war has just been declared. The trees in my veins strain, roulette wheel of numbing denial spins relief, pins in place to keep my frame from crumbling beneath the skin suit of better days. When your initials weren't carved on my bark heart and I still believed in sunshine. And no one will know except the loggers when they come to carry me home beneath a green blanket of Chopin playing chainsaws that even make my demise desirable. No one will know because my bones will be buried behind sheetrock and paint or left in some clearance bin with a green spray paint mark to end up some side project. Even then, no one will wonder why the dark line lingers in the cut zone of my bones. No one will ask, how did it come to this? And I don't know why my doorbell's ringing. And ultimately, the score won't matter because there are no winners when the daily reminders of your absence are in the heavy silver chain around my neck and kaleidoscope of clinking stones on my wrist. We were supposed to split. It has all been for nothing. 
at the end of the day, the forest has been decapitated and you have destroyed me. You win. Who is it, Issa? I don't know who's at my door, so I'm gonna have you on. It's, it's all good. It's my neighbor. Okay, so um, next up, uh, we have Jeff Cottrell first to read on the list. So I'm going to go ahead and let him uh, get into that. All right, so this one is relatively new. I uh, don't think I've done it here yet. It's called uh, How to Win Any Debate or Argument Without Even Trying. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Jeff Talk. So you'd like to learn how to win any debate or argument without even trying, would you? It's a simple technique known as the straw man, straw man, or for the mathematically inclined, the straw man squared. I like to call it the Benny. The first step, when somebody makes a point, you call that point a straw man argument. It doesn't matter how relevant or sensible the statement may or may not be, you can invalidate it just by labeling it as a straw man. And then here's the important part. You come up with your own straw man reason as to why that point is a straw man. Bonus points if you can twist your opponent's statement into a personal attack against you. And when your opponent rebuts, you shout, I'm shutting you down. And then you strut away as if you've won by default. If you've done this correctly, your opponent will be too confused to offer any coherent counter arguments. Checkmate for you. Let's have a look at the straw man straw man in action. I like apples. Apples are fine, but I prefer oranges. Straw man! That's a straw man argument! How is that a straw man? It's a straw man because you're saying I'm trying to ban oranges. You're implying apples are unhealthy and dangerous. I never said anything like that. Uh-uh! I'm shutting you down. Person one struts away. You see how easy it is? Let's look at another example. Comic book movies are awesome because they kick ass. Sure, but I wish Hollywood had more room for original and independent fare. Straw man! That's a straw man argument! Huh? That's a straw man because you're saying comic book movies are childish and petty. You're saying I'm not smart enough to understand or appreciate art house cinema. Huh? No, I, I'm shutting you down! Person one struts away. And there, our expert scores another victory point. Mission accomplished. Now, here's another common scenario. This one's a little more complicated, but watch how deftly our expert uses the Benny to pull off another triumph. We have to deplatform all writers and artists whose opinions I don't like. Doesn't that contradict freedom of expression, though? A truly free society welcomes all points of view and engages in nuanced, thoughtful. Straw man! What are you talking? Straw man! Straw man! You're saying I hate free speech! I. Straw! You. Man! It, bah, if, get, you know, shut up. You, you know, you're kind of proving my, shut up, just shut up. I'm shutting you down now. Person one struts away. And there you have it. Another well-earned win for our hero. By using the Benny, we never have to engage honestly or directly with anybody else's perspectives ever again. One last point. I'm sure many of you are thinking that the satire of this whole piece is itself a huge straw man, just some bullshit I made up to distract from my own limited debating skills. This would make it a straw man, straw man, straw man, or if you will, a straw man cubed. I don't blame you for thinking that, but one, I'm not, I swear I'm not making it up. I actually know a couple of guys who do this stuff. And two, that's a straw man. It's a straw man because you're implying I'm made of straw. You're saying I'm just a scarecrow, so I'm shutting you down. Thank you for attending my Jeff talk. Yes, let's go. Let's go, Jeff Cottrell. Oh my God, let's go. So his book is amazing, Hate Story. If you have not had a chance to experience this man in person, uh, he's he'll be here in Albuquerque. Like y'all, I'm so stoked uh, to have him That's come right. down and share his work with all of us. Uh, get your tickets if you've not got your tickets for for the uh, for the festival. You really need to do that. Uh, let's go. 
All right, Jane's spoken words in the house. If Jane uh, would like to read or anyone else who is joining us, please let me know and I will uh, get you on the list. Uh, right here from Albuquerque, we have Arlena and then Rich, uh, and then we'll break for our, our, our first feature, which is uh, Rita. And then we'll go back to the open mic list. We got Teresa at Poetastic and anyone else who put their name in the chat. Uh, Prada. Oh, hi, Miss Betty. How are you? Hi, I just want to say hi to Shaggy G and Ra that I made it here. Okay. Love you guys. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Good to see you, Miss Betty. All right, Arlena, whenever you're ready. And uh, to answer Rich's question, uh, we could go like four or five minutes. So it's not necessarily the amount of pieces, it's more the time. Okay. Prada, I, I just want to say I'm not, I'm not, I may spit upon, but I'm in Walmart right now, and I told everybody I was coming. I love me some Shaka G. I love Shaka G to the to to, her, to the scars on her bones, and and, and Ra came in today, and I, I love her pieces, but I came to support, so I just want to know I'm here, but I'm in Walmart, so I don't want my uh, friends at Walmart to uh, interfere with what's going on. So thank you, thank you so much. I'm listening. You read that erotica in Walmart. <laughs> Oh, he's in the bath bomb section. <laughs> For those who didn't catch our four hours this morning on his show, that's funny. All right, let's go. Um, yeah, that was hilarious. All right, Arlena, the floor is all yours. Okay, I have a couple of, I, but we have, what, five minutes? Okay, I have a couple of poems that I've written recently. Um, this one is called, If Only I Was a Geek. If only I was a geek, we could have bonded over the Orville, hot sauce torture and all, when you came with me as moral support to my young niece's funeral and there was nothing else on TV in the hotel room. But instead I was a wimp, asked you if we could watch something else. I expected you to, you to say okay and change the channel, but you liked the show, had to see what would happen in this episode. That was more important to you than the fact that torture is a trigger for me, that I just can't handle it on TV or in movies, even if it's demons on Supernatural. You said I have to deal with my triggers instead of avoiding them. When I was at your apartment and the show Code Black came on about an ER beyond capacity, you didn't understand why I was upset. The next time I was at your place, I used I statements to tell you how that had felt for me. I'd learned in therapy not to say made me feel and went into an explanation of how I'd experienced medical trauma when my appendix ruptured. Now I think I shouldn't have had to explain that. You should have been compassionate, but you had to watch your show. You had to be right and you knew what was best for me. Still, I thought we had come to an understanding that evening, one that satisfied me at the time. You said your therapist had told you that we had a mother-daughter relationship. The conversation went on for hours and you did lose some of your defensiveness by the end. I offered to leave without judgment the next time a show came on that triggered me. It was a compromise I could live with, though telling the story to a peer counselor on the phone after I broke up with you years later because you hadn't been treating me like a friend should, I realized that to him it sounded like you cared more about your TV shows than you did about me. That's what talking to a safe person will make you realize, how bad it actually was. Being a geek involves thicker skin than I possess. The term originally came from a carnival performer who bit the heads off chickens before a cheering crowd. Forgive me, but I'm not that tough. I'd rather play apples to apples than cards against humanity. And here's my second one. It's kind of in the same vein. It's called Sudden Yet Inevitable Betrayal. I found the plastic stegosaurus in the compost heap, the T-Rex in a bag of plastic toys from the thrift store for $2.99. You introduced me to Firefly. My favorite dinosaur is actually Triceratops, same as yours. We both love the same favorite dessert, tiramisu, but that wasn't enough to keep our friendship together. 
A mutual friend pressured me to reconcile with you, but it was a broken promise, like Lucy with the football, but like Charlie Brown, I fell for it. All it took was you being nice to me and I was crying, letting you back in, and things were fine for about a month. Then you stopped responding to my messages, wouldn't even open them. She made excuses for you, assured me you weren't mad at me, but you were. And the toxic sludge in the message you finally sent? Well, I don't know what cliche I can use to express how bad I felt, still feel. I introduced the two of you several years ago, and now you both happily ride off into the sunset without me. I could say, curse your sudden yet inevitable betrayal, but you're the only one I know who would get it. Thank you. Yes, let's go, Arlena. Get that voice going. Hell yeah. Let's go. You know, there is some things can't be reconciled, so that's fine. We just move on. All right, next up we got uh, Rich Boucher. Uh, I love that there's so many Albuquerque poets showing up and showing out tonight. Uh, people who I love sharing the stage with uh, and giving big hugs when I get to see them uh, here locally. So awesome. I can't wait. Uh, Rich had an incredible feature not too long ago with Nemo Soom here at The Word is Right. Uh, so if you've not had a chance to see the video, go back and look at it. I believe it's already up on the YouTube page. If not, I'll get it up on the YouTube page. Uh, but it is a sensational feature. Instead of having two separate features, they did one long one. Uh, and it was, and they even dressed alike. Like it was such an incredible show. Uh, the, these men. Uh, and then we will break and we'll bring up our first feature, uh, Rita Zahir. Are you ready, Rich? I am ready. And thank you very much for that introduction. Um, and uh, it, it wasn't really apparent for those who joined the feature that Nemo and I got to share. But uh, we had, yeah, we did coordinate our garb and our attire uh, all the way down to uh, the same color and manufacturer of boxer briefs. It wasn't really shown on the show, but I thought it'd be uh, important. I thought that would be necessary to reveal that. So tonight, I am sharing a poem I had published in Unknotting the Line, the Poetry and Prose. I got two poems published in this volume off of Dos Gatos Press, uh, edited by David Myshin and Scott Wiggerman. And I'm going to share the second of my two poems in the book. This is called A Long Weird Sueño About Xeriscapes, Hookers, and fry bread. I started hitchhiking my way back home from Magdalena around midnight. And about three hours into the walk, I forgot where I lived. Stumbling past small brick buildings with blue doors and fearful suns bolted to the doors. Tattered pages from ancient newspapers blew around the corners of the town square while the stars overhead shook and tilted like maybe whoever was seeing them was drunk. I found myself wondering if I actually lived way out where missiles are tested to see if they still explode correctly. Staggering along Route 60 in the dark, the whole time hoping headlights might find me suitable from behind. Thumbing it so hard under the small town moon, that I wound up with stigmata. Broken glass on the side of the road glimmering the moonlight back to me intermittently, recalling that wherever I did live, they had year-round Fourth of July gunfire. Zara escapes aplenty, mountains named for the blood of Christ, megachurches next to the Walmart where a pretty hooker named Bree once told me she could only orgasm in French, and that I would never get to see that. Monsoons the size of a glass of water, and all of a well-planned sudden, I misplace a few hours, and then my bed comes rushing up to my face, as if it missed me so damned much. I should probably tell you that I totally had a sueño mal about the end of the world, and it was terrible, because in the dream, I never got a chance to try fry bread. I got up out of bed and took a walk outside just in time for a strange morning thunderstorm to begin. I didn't look up. 
I looked down. The blacktop in the apartment parking lot started getting dotted with drops of rain. But the sky was as blue as it wanted to be anyway. Yes, let's much. go. The mega church of the wall is so true. Uh, it is hilarious. Thank you. It's like cool. Pool halls always being next to strip clubs. Uh, let's go. Uh, <laughs> I only work out that's that's true. Church. Also, you gotta you gotta you gotta have a titty bar next to a pool hall. <laughs> it's so true. All right, I'm gonna turn off my camera so I can read uh, Rita's uh, bio because she's so beautiful and she's so wonderful and she has this incredible book coming. Uh, she deserves uh, not to have me breaking up on my audio. Uh, so I met Rob, the Rob poet. Um, on Instagram, oh God, at least a year or so ago. And, you know, we, we had already, oh, maybe two, I'd say it's been a while. And um, then uh, we were blessed because when we had slots opening for the 2023 debut poets, uh, I, I checked with her. I was like, hey, are you still interested in uh, perhaps publishing a book? And she's like, yes. And I was like, well, let's go. Uh, it, it would be an incredible addition to the team this year. And she said, yes, she said, yes. Uh, I was so excited as I am every time someone uh, joins us here at Red or Green Books. In fact, this morning, uh, both uh, Rita and Shaki were, were with me on AJ Houston's live on Instagram. And that was a three hour show, four hour show y'all, almost a four hour show. I think we went like what? We went like eight minutes eight minutes less than four hours. <laughs> we were there all day. I mean, we were all three of us for four hours, okay. But uh, the, these two came in and they read and they featured. So if you go to um, AJ uh, Word Artist, I think, or AJ Word One is his handle on Instagram, you can see the video from today if you wanna catch some more of these incredible poets. Uh, so here we go. Rita's a here goes by raw poet, R-A-H meaning the pathway of the poet in Farsi. And also she's been entangled in a love affair with poetry for decades. She just started writing and performing in 2021. She creates pieces that range from female empowerment, love, heartbreak, and sensuality to mental health issues all done with love. You can find her on Instagram at rah underscore poet. You can find her at TikTok at rah underscore. Her bio and everything is on the event page for tonight. Unmute your mics, give a warm welcome to our first feature tonight. The raw poet Rita Zahir. Let's go. Cheers, break a leg. Do it. Okay, still hard. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I'm so excited. Um, I am um, this writing this book, it was really a dream. And I actually mentioned that on an IG live that like my dream bucket list thing is to write a book. Um, what I didn't say is to write a book that like actually made me feel things. Um, and this book does. So uh, I'm going to start with um, let's see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Breathe. Um, okay. I'm going to start with, uh, this book, this piece, that's kind of the last piece in the book and it's called, I can stop at any time. The thought occurs to me that I may be digging my own grave all the while telling myself I am planting a garden sitting here in the dirt with the brutal sun on my back and only the forgiveness of the breeze caressing my face. I wonder, have I been here before? Is it actually the memory that is buried beneath this soil? Will this seed grow to be a flower with succulent fruit or a poisonous weed that crawls up to destroy me? The faint buzz I hear near my ear could be honeybees eager to partake in pollinating the future of forever. Or it could be flies attracted to the alluring scent of an impending beautiful disaster. Of course, no prickly premonition or perceptive prediction is gonna prevent my persuasive predilection. 
So next to the seeds, I'll bury my intuition. I'll pat the ground with a soft touch and a heavy heart. I'll sing to the particle flower the praises of the sun as the leaves in the trees hum along. The hummingbird does not sing along. She's familiar with the song, but she also knows how it ends. Never mind. Better not to get bogged down by the details as they march by in a million directions. Little ants maintaining their mission while living happily in organized chaos. And I feel you drawing me into your painted landscape, a world so vibrant and exotic. It makes everything else feel dull and faded. You, you trigger intensities, dormant nerve endings that had been hiding under my skin. And now I can only feel you. I'm reluctantly enraptured by the way your beautiful moon bathes the midnight blue sky in love and sprinkles her sparkly drops of ecstasy across the top. I'm tied up in knots and continue twirling in the music of the moments you create, licking your pixie dust off my fingertips. Tastes like powdered sugar falling off warm beignets. Next to that perfect cup of hickory coffee, the warm scent, like a drifting all around me, like a daydream. It's been a long day and I wanna settle into your silence, cozy soft blanket wrapped around my shoulders. Hold my hand and walk me back in time down dark rainy streets that smell of fading memories of forgiveness, the distant sound of wind chimes calling the chorus of angels home from singing love songs in loveless streets, you recalibrating the rhythm of my heart so that it only beats to the flow of your breath on my neck. And after all of this, one day, Someone will question why I believed every line of the poetry, even though I knew it was just a story peppered with pretty words and playful prepositions. Wonder why I followed the yellow brick road, even though I knew the man behind the curtain intimately, intuitively, intrinsically. Wonder why I thought it's stopped at any time. <laughs> and that's that piece. Um, I also, uh, in, this, in this book, I tried to separate it into these three different sections. Um, and the first section is this idea of beginnings and it's called, you know, Saffron Sunrise. So, you know, origin stories and things like that. And the second section is, um, Saffron Sunset, and it talks about endings and losings and heartbreaks and death and a lot of um, traumas that you go through. And then the last part is called Saffron Sweets, which is love stories. So in the stories of becoming, um, part of breaking is, is becoming something new. Um, and so this piece is called Jezebel. They called her Jezebel. In an effort to quiet her storm, they were worried about the stories she could tell. Terrified of the tenacity of her tongue, her words pronounced like an ancient spell. The inflections of her voice, a reflection of how deep her monsters dwell. Concerned of the commotion she caused, barriers broken, shattered remnants of kingdoms that fell, secrets hidden like buried treasure, starlit, silent prayers her lips will never tell. She's a pious priestess, just playing the pariah, pillaging permission, possessing potions stolen from the darkest hallways of hell. She could drown you in the vision, suddenly believing in the power of the wishing well. Honeysuckle scented whispers, emoting a seductive hypnotic smell. 
She would pluck back control from those that had precluded her, people trying to abnegate her place and refute her power. She clapped thunder with just a whisper on those that tried to leverage her name as a slur, cause cataclysmic catastrophes to occur, deemed the dismissive as the catalyst to the disaster, enlisted the same elements that had first created her. She called out to the earth, wind and fire. Then she shed torrential tears of hope holy water, the floods cleared the path to the future. The future revealed through extreme torture spoken into being the reality she would conjure. Maybe, just maybe, pixie dust is just dried up and crushed fears. Maybe she conceived magic with each of her tears. Maybe the gallows of growth is where the victim finally disappears. Here is a heroine, a self-defining happily ever after. She would glue all her broken pieces back together and don it as a beautiful shield of armor, wield a sword forged in flames of forbearance, the proud protagonist pushing past the precipice with pure petulance because after the storm settles, only new growth will restore that balance. And that's that piece. <laughs> um, this is a piece that I actually just added to the book. It came out of Poetry Month um, every year. for This is my third year in a row where I've written um, a piece every day. Um, and this one's called Sacrificial Sunset. He scribbled suicide notes in stardust, hiding them in the corners of the sky. The world may require explanations when they notice he didn't show up to work. Maybe no one ever notices the brightest star in their galaxy is burning out until it is too late. The brilliant blaze of his light brought others out of darkness so no one would surmise that his home was burning down. No one questions the lifespan of a star. They admire it from a distance, profiting from its existence, trying never to look directly at it. And when everyone else slept, he would just watch the world turn, always missing the moon, not knowing she's still reflecting his light. Supernova can come for any of us. The rule is the more massive the star, the faster it burns up. That's how depression lurks. The strongest beam can still be easily bent. The brightest light casts the darkest shadows. He sat by the Western coast as he did to greet every evening, watching the world change color, usually fighting to stay above water. But in the dimness of that final dusk, he resolved to just let go. And that's that piece. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't even know how far I am into my time, uh, but. You you have 11 more minutes. Okay. <laughs> you have 11 minutes, but you don't have to take all the time. You can take a little more time. I don't want you to feel pressure either way, but we're just enjoying you. So take your time. Oh, amazing. Okay, thank you. This is a lot of fun. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm gonna do this piece is actually um, is one that's celebrating um, because Mother's Day is coming up. My grandmother and my mother and her twin sister. Um, so uh, it's a, a pretty important piece to me and it's called La Luna. La Luna never gets to dream. Shy of the silhouette of sweet slumber sitting silently, shining in solitude, seeming to be surrounded by stars. They are actually a million miles away. And she is all alone in a crowd. So instead she dutifully stands watch over us as we sleep, stretches out her loving arms and holds up the night sky across her back, a guardian of the angels among us the dreamers lost in sleepless nights. Yet no matter how bright she shines, no one thinks to make a wish on her light. She is just there, the closest companion of the darkness, 
flowing out of all of us. Like the moon, Esther was never afforded the luxury to dream. Being married off at the sacred age of 17, birthing twin girls into a male dominated world, bearing the brutality of being a mother when you still needed to be mothered, judgment weighing heavy, smoothing the edges of her hard curves, the definitions of who you are defined by careless words, people started to partake when the jello was still meant to be taking shape like patient ballerina dancers stretching yearningly in the wings, one more child to raise with the brute force of being, one more meal to cook with pure unsalted love, one more story to retell the history that created us, one more hurt to heal with magic hidden in the folds of an apron, never wanting to be de deemed demanding, waiting half a century to be spoken into being. Don't judge their meaning, not worthy or demeaning. The girl was just dreaming of dreaming. Esther's daughters would dream, but only in black and white. The colors stolen by the guardians of the status quo, the soldiers who knew their days were only numbered by the mere feelings of females. Fearless fearless females, hiding in the darkness of the shadow of greatness, waiting to redraw those lines. But first you have to survive a revolution of upheaval. No rest will be afforded to the wariest of people, discovering that you never belong to any piece of land, that through generations you never grew attached to any grain of sand. You're just a wanderer carrying the whole world in your hand because double X always marks the spot of lineage. You become responsible to transport an ancestral heritage. It always rests on the back of the strongest horse of the carriage, my mother just barely finished telling that story and then leaned in close with gentle intent and sprinkled seedlings in my ear, like magic beans that would grow into my own giant story. Another branch on the beanstalk reaching into the clouds of heaven. She whispered, I'm giving you all the art supplies. Don't you dare waste them coloring inside the lines. You dream wild dreams in charismatic colors only. You dream them for me. Well, no, that's actually not what she said at all. I imagined it all. Her whispers simply faded into embattled breaths. But since I know when I die, I will not have a daughter by my side. My dream of freedom will have to be yours too. So I promise you that, mom. I will be brave for you if you will be a dreamer for me. And that's that piece. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna do one last one then I'm gonna try and keep this one very light. <laughs> um, that one was very heavy on me. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a fun one uh, <laughs> that was kind of like um, somewhat built on a prompt. So it's called Safe Words. Words echoing in the endless enclaves at the edge of everything. You say, all these words you got, you better get your safe words ready. But there are no safe words with you. They all drip precariously from your pretty mouth, feeding deeply buried seeds of desire, growing into wildflowers, long stretched out fields of baby blue wildflowers, fodder feeding wildfires, the silver lining starting to slip from in front of the sun, sprinkling flecks of gold on brazenly bronzed features wistfully walking through the field, feeling, feeling the fondling of flower fingers, brushing up against my warm, exposed skin. The tall stalks would rub gently against the outlines of my thighs. I lay down in the landscape of your sensory overload, dizzy in the haze of your vibration, recalling how you incited the incantations inciting riots on my skin as the profanely possessive words rumble off your lips again and again. 
my Rita, my sweet Rita, you're mine, my Rita. Declarations documenting your deed of ownership with a dangerous dissertation demanding dedicated audience with my truest constituents, formulated among friends, fictitiously flirting, forgetting the fallacy of forever, finding false prophecy, hiding in the stories of your tongue, spun from threats of thoughts of a true connection. What started as playful, provoking, progressed into us each having to prove our point, and you trying to woo me with two-way words down a one-way road, me crashing with the last turn, not seeing the road in front of me, our perfectly paired soundtrack playing in the background, happy for a moment, just two kids with caramel sundaes until they melted and all we had left was a sticky mess. So maybe one day I could lick your soul clean and you can kiss my messy emotions away. And that's that piece. <laughs> yes! Let's go. You guys unmute your mics. Give it up for our first <clears throat> feature reader tonight. Rita's yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Now, I, I didn't see your cash handles. So what are your cash handles, whether it's PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, <laughs> Zella? Um. You know what, I just realized that because uh, I started out as Accidental Poet, that all my my cash app and all that is still Accidental Poet. Um, That's OK. Uh, so, so cash uh, app, Accidental, is that still like an active account? Yes. I mean, well, I'll put it in the chat, but. OK. Every, everyone so, just wait till the book comes out and then. <laughs> no, don't wait. Get your order if in before the book, the book That would be amazing. <laughs> All right, Congratulations so like, on your book and uh, well done on your feature. Thank you so much. Here's here's the deal, right? If, if we were enjoying Rita in a cafe or at a at a at a live feature event or in a brewery, we would have the hat. We'd take Teresa Galleon's hat and we'd be like, oh, "Someone put some money in here." Uh, it, we would ask for everyone to put a couple bucks in the hat uh, for our features because it's 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 time and energy it's a lot of effort to put a, a feature set together and they put an incredible performances on for you tonight uh so there's 17 people in the room if everyone puts you know two three four bucks in each of the poets hats you know uh th that this is a very nice little tip day uh, if you would like to in lieu of uh tips <laughs> Shaki does a shout out to your book. Uh, in lieu of tips, you can also just pre-order their book. Uh, so I'm gonna let uh, Rita drop her, uh, her her link in the chat for pre-ordering, whether it's uh, you're, you're gonna contact her directly, find her uh, on Facebook, uh, raw underscore poet, R-A-H underscore poet is how you can find her on Instagram uh, to get your pre-orders in. Uh, and if you would like to leave her a tip, accidental poet, that covers what, cash up, what other handles? Oh, um, no, I'll put it in. I, I actually did change it. I'm so sorry. Oh. oh, OK. Well, <laughs> when no, I go started ahead. working on the book, I changed it to Raw Poet. So I'll put it in. It's just okay, uh, so dollar sign Raw start, Poet on cash. OK, out. so because we're also live streaming and people might be watching this back uh, at a later time who oh. aren't going to be able to see the chat. So just go ahead and like say, just vocalize what the handles are for uh, 20 tips. <laughs> Um, yeah, my cash app is just a uh, dollar sign raw poet. R-A-H-P-O-E-T for those who don't know how to spell raw poet. Now, if you don't have cash app, you have PayPal, uh, you have so something other than that, reach out to us and let us know. You're welcome to uh, send us something via PayPal and we can send it to her via cash app. We do that oftentimes for features when uh, people do not have uh, just necessarily cash app. Uh, her book is only $15. That's practically free. So get your pre-order in. She will sign it and send it to you. These are very important books. They're the debut collections of these authors. So you you got to get it in uh, and you got to get your order in soon. Uh, so if you're not following Rita, raw underscore poet, R-A-H underscore poet. And if you'd like to tip her, raw poet is, <laughs> uh, is where the uh, tips can go. Uh, carrier pigeons can bring money as well. Firstborns, all that good stuff. Uh, just don't do nothing, right? Just, just don't do nothing. Thing. And if you think I'm not going to send Rita $2 because it makes me fucking cheap, you're fucking wrong. 
because it doesn't. <laughs> it makes her $2, uh, $2 more in her pocket. Buy her a gallon of gas, buy her a cup of coffee, just don't do nothing. All right, we're going to keep rocking with this uh, open mic list tonight. Um, I have uh, Stacey Dyson on the list for tonight. So like y'all can't go anywhere. Uh, I got Teresa Galleon. Oh my God, I'm so excited Teresa's here. I've been missing this woman. We live in the same city, but we're rarely in the same city at the same time. Uh, so I'm very excited she's here to read. Um, Ed Poetastic, you're after Teresa. Stacey Dyson, you'll be after Ed. Then we're gonna break. We're gonna bring up Shocky G, our second feature. And then we're gonna go back to the open mic list where I have Mark States and anyone else who winds up wanting to get on the open mic list. Uh, all right, so here we go. Miss Teresa, I'm gonna turn it over to you, beautiful. And then Poetastic, you are on deck. Thank you, Marissa. Yeah, it's kind of nice to be home, actually. Uh, however, uh, Facebook is reminding me that a year ago, on at this time, I was floating down the Nile River on an Egyptian yacht. And so Egypt is still holding on to me, and I'm still writing po poems about Egypt. Uh, this poem is called Dancing in Valley of the Kings. The last word ran across the velvet night. A pen clings to blank space of a papyrus as sleep captures her under the stars. Dragon light is born every morning she exhales. Wilted collard greens tickle the tongue, cornbread crumbs paint the chest. Thoughts of faraway places mingle with her digestion. She holds pain in a spare tire. No flats allowed today. The rough road rocks the rubber, carrying her forward. She bounces with the rolling wheels on a mission to seek and find her way home. The sunrise winks at her with respect. She smiles in the color of gratitude. A break for a nap and dreams take over. She strolls down the Valley of the Kings. Did you know kings and queens and pharaohs dance at night with the gods and goddesses when all the people walkers go home? The tourist does not know about this nightly flame. Comparing notes from tomb to tomb, a disappointing discovery is made. None of the gold and trinkets can dance in the light. Useless they are to the light bodies dancing throughout the night through the Valley of the Kings. Thank you. That was absolutely lovely. I love the way yes. she, I love the way she read her voice. It's perfect for that poem. Thank you so much. So lovely. Well done, Mama. Teresa is amazing. Uh, uh, yes, we're just so honored uh, to have her uh, in our community. I want to go to Egypt now, right? I mean, this is what this woman does. She takes you around the world with her words, and then she makes you long to experience it. Um, and, and she lives here, right? This woman who's been all over the world lives here. Come on now. We have an incredible city. All right, let's go. Poetastic, are you ready? Yep, ready, because my name is Eddie. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hope everyone ready for some fun underneath the wonderful Potastic Sun. And happy Mother's Day. I know it's on Sunday, but I hope all the mothers can enjoy my wordplay. Well, first is, my name is Ed Potastic. I'm feeling fantastic. Please get a time to enjoy my ride for all for Sublime. Um, I got one. This is called Motherly Love. When I was a boy, you were my nurse, teacher, and friend. Now that I'm older, I still can't fully comprehend. How could one woman always be there for me? She did what she could, even I could see. We're the fruit while moms are the trees. Moms are always the busiest of the worker bees. There's no love like a mother's heart, a love that lives and breathes in our hearts. A mother's love never changes for all time. It only gets stronger and stronger while it shines. Moms used to be celebrated each and every day. Well, them, where could we run, stay, or play? If you don't have your mom, but only your dad, it's okay. Love them too and don't be sad. 
hearts full of dedication, devotion, affection that never ends. A river of love always flows over, over, and over again. We're a big part of her while she's a big part of you. I think that's why we're red and rarely blue. Mom, you're not just my mother, but my dad. You're an experience that any kid could ever had. Moms, thank you for not stop loving us. Don't worry, all this love is going to make us bust. Moms, there are no easy words for how much we love you. Hope these words resonate and stick inside you like Lou. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Poe did you want to do another? Oh, heck yes, a little spice make everything look nice. Okay, let's do this. Um, <laughs> this is called um, The Naked Mile. Sorry about that. Uh, there's... <clears throat> Here I stand naked. Your soft flesh is wide open. A roosters of love moans into the air. Our blood is boiling over, over, and over again. There are lust leaves our bodies bare. Trust and naked. My flame has grown to epic proportions. An ember, an ember is burning between my center. Our miss erotic sense of tantalized devotion. Let our warm bodies shimmer and get a bit thinner. Trust and naked. The bedroom soaked in a sexual overflow. The passion starts to ignite all around. Our bodies are creating a smoldering halo. Our mouths make lewd, raw, and explicit sounds. Crossed and naked, I peer into your bleak, thirsty eyes. Our tongues collect their bitter and sweet jolts. Our hungry bodies dance while our loins cries. The stimulation is coming in by the millions of volts. Here I stand naked. I gradually thrusting in an up and down direction. The inner flame delivers while our legs quiver. Our bodies lost themselves in an instinctive, steamy chain reaction. We quickly dance while our bodies shiver. Here I stand naked. My hardness caresses the abyss of your soul. The groans and moans we quickly swallow. Our mild displeasure went instantly hollow. We're burning away our doubtful inner shadows. Here I stand naked. Our lungs full of indescribable rampant energy. Heartbeat stuck in a harmonized, electrified awakening. Our naked flesh spread out to a deep degree. Our minds kept constantly coming. We couldn't stop grinning. Here I stay naked. Our chest rub against chest and sweat rub against sweat. It does a collision on our two sparks. The physical eclipse of our burning silhouettes, our burning vibration throughout our hearts. Here I stay naked. My mask disappearing deep into your pink abyss. Our minds float tenderly upwards. The passion of a new definition of bliss. A new feeling of euphoria we discovered. Here I stay naked. We have short breaths of air bursting past our lips. Our rampant hips lost in rampant synchronized movement. We're moving and moving faster than any whip, electrifying for fitness of improvement. Here I stand naked. We're feeling the wild bursting sensation, the feeling swirling and twirling inside our groins. Our minds teleported towards a milky bleak vacation, the orgasmic pressure at least inside our loins. Here I stand naked our deep structure easing to our domain, our whispers of burning intentions, the stimulation yet enticing crimson rain, the lewd acts of soft, piercing interceptions. Here I stand naked, the sunshine throughout the bedroom, our bodies are exhausted from dancing, the radiant sun started to consume our tomb, there goes our midnight romance of joyfully relaxing. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go, Poet Chastic. Oh, I love it. Let's go. <laughs> he does. He makes everyone feel fantastic. And yeah, we just, and he had his very first uh, workshop here, which is right. Uh, it was also, it was wonderful, right? So you got to come. You got to come support. Uh, it, he is, he is, uh, yeah. And he's become a really great friend as well. So I'm, I'm super excited that he is part of our community. Oh, thank you. Uh, all cool. right. Next up, we got. Hmm? Oh, thank you for we making got... me feel uncomfortable. Sorry. <laughs> you can't script this. Like, you can't script this. It's perfect. It's perfect. Oh, my God. Thank you for making me feel fantastic. All right. Yes. Thank you, Eddie, uh, so much. We, we just love you. 
All right. Uh, next up, we have Stacey Dyson. <clears throat> we have Stacey Dyson. Uh, next up, I just for the crickets, for those who didn't hear it the first time, uh, Stacey Dyson is in the room. Uh, she is our fearless leader at Tesoro. We are women, white, a world, a world. <laughs> This woman fucks me up uh, in the best no possible more way. No refined in like sugar the, for you. In like the cheese its way. <laughs> she, don't don't she, start. <laughs> oh, she messes with my brain. All right. Uh, this is Stacy Dyson. Um, we're so excited to have her. She's our fearless leader at the Worldwide Women's Organization Tesoro, which I'm so, so honored to have helped uh, begin and to start last year. We're so excited uh, to be going around um, doing so many events with women from all over the world who are just we're, we're writers, we're poets, we're publishers, we're professionals, we're spoken word artists. It's There's just so many. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go to firesingers.com. And you can learn all about what we got going on. And then after Stacey Dyson, we have our feature, our second feature reader tonight, Shocky G. And then we'll go back to the open mic list where I have Mark States and H.A. Houston. H.A. Houston, y'all. Let's go. All right, Miss Stacey, the floor is all yours. Thank you, darling. I appreciate it. We'll talk about the cheeses incident later. Um, two pieces. One from... Um, my last collection, follow me on this. And then the very newest one, which is the frontispiece poem for the first anniversary book that Tesoro will be releasing in, if there are no glitches, August. From the time I was a little girl, I heard two things, be more, be better whether it was dress, behavior, speech, grades, whatever it was. As a girl, I was expected to be more, be better. See, you were told boys could slough off. It was okay because boys would be boys, but girls? Girls had to be women. You weren't even given the choice of an in-between. You had to know how to take care, be strong, take care, be present, take care, pull the race forward, take care, be more, be better, all the time. I would have enjoyed hearing at least once, be more about yourself. Be better about doing things for you. I would have enjoyed hearing at least once, be more appreciated. Be better about who you let into your heart and your life and your bed. I would have appreciated hearing just once, you don't have to be more of anything or better at everything. You are a black woman. Let them come to you. I don't see that happening anytime soon. And I am sorry too. I am sorry for my little sisters grow up under the burden of be more, be better, be more, be better, be more, be better, because it's never going to be for us or to us. We are world over, centuries older, the hand that rocks the cradle. We are somewhere in the background of every man who has ever taken power. We are the strong ones, the unassailable ones, the ones who keep on going, keep on kicking, keep on kicking, keep on fighting. We have to do more. We have to be better because the world collapses without us. We have to do more. We have to be better because we know in our blood, and bone that civilization does not exist without us. We have to do more and be better just to stay one step behind. And all that do more, be better, guarantees nothing. We are still paid 69 cents on the dollar. We are still ignored as if we do not exist in policy and opinion when we are assertive then we are bossy and aggressive. When we are demanding of our rights, we are unfeminine troublemakers. When we, God forbid, express an opinion that does not fall into lockstep with whatever the current thought and policy is, never mind that said policy affects our health, our rights, our bodies, we are called traitor, ingrate, bitch, and weak. We are none of those things. 
We are simply forever, forever trying to be more, be better, be more, be better, be more, be better, be more, be better, be more. <sighs> yeah. Let's go. And then let's go, Stacey. The very, very newest one, which will make its way into the book that I keep telling you guys is coming, and it is, I swear it is, called uh, Because the Sun Would Not Move. This one is Lyric for Sierra. For the ones whose mothers told them, this is a stupid way to make a living, you need to grow up. Whose daddy smiled at the sun and moon and stars light in your eyes, then said, I can hear you. Sing your song. For the ones who even for a moment let someone else dictate how their heart should be in lust or desire or fear or sometimes even love. For the ones who made no choice but to lie dead inside. For the change makers, soul wakers, booty shakers. They all understand real beauty. They just speak it in different languages. For every woman everywhere who got told, shut up, men are talking, shut up. Your children need you, shut up. This word, this world is not yours to deliver. For every sister who fed someone else's soul before feeding her own, then went to bed starving, hungry, day after year after always, this is the one thing you have been praying, bleeding, crying for. This is the arrow piercing the heart of the hunter that chases you into burnt shadow alleyways and even darker, emptier paths. This is a lightning strike that will damn the demon hiding in your pocket to a disintegration of ash, regret, and bad dreams. This is the bullwhip burning triumphant into the overseer's back. Let's see if he dances while you laugh. This is the golden storm of ideas that visit you at night. So you draw deeper, cleaner breath breath through the rest of the less than fastidious day. This is the hint of grace in your mother changing her mind about you before she died in too much pain for the morphine drip to count her. This is your father's very last smile on the beach where he died in Jamaica. This is the one thing, the one breathing, burning angel that will see you home soft home safe, a heartbeat in ancestral harmonic, the clarity demanded in the pierce and gaze of a third eye. This is the game changer, the one truly golden ticket, the only chance you will ever own. Do this. Take your heart, gripped firm between your teeth and throat, Open wide your life, your one precious awakening life. And make the wind let you fly. Oh, yeah. Okay, <sighs> Stacy. Burned it up as usual. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Jane. I was ready for you. I got my gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, let's go. Uh, yeah. If if you guys want more of Stacey Dyson, she'll be here in Mexico in uh in September as one of our headliner uh featured readers. So please, uh, definitely, definitely get your tickets. Uh, you do not want to miss an a chance. Uh, for all these incredible artists to be here, uh, and and to be reading, uh, it is just it's going to be a sensational opportunity, a great event. Uh, think of it as an investment into your experiences and to meet some of these human beings in the flesh uh, is just going to be just wonderful. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring up Shaki. I'm going to turn off my camera so I don't sound like it's Jamaica again. Uh, it's not like she needs extra fodder uh, to, uh, <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> to make fun of me. And that's cool because I can totally, I can take it. 
<laughs> she's already shaking her head like, oh, fuck. Uh, and and I, I do have to say, I'm so sorry that you have to follow that shocking. <laughs> but I, I know you could do it because you are just a little woman. And um, I feel bad for Mark who has to follow you. Uh, but let's go. All uh, right, let's go. We're going to we're going to keep rocking and rolling this. I hope you all are enjoying uh, the show so far, Shakti is a talented spoken word poet known for her captivating performances and powerful words. As a 2022 Grand Slam champion in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, she has proven her skill by winning multiple slam competitions, both online and in person. Her work has been featured in various publications, including Red or Green Books, out Loud, LGBTQ Anthology, and American Graveyard, and Anti-Gun Violence Anthology, Nymeria Publishing's Descendants of Medusa Anthology, and her own self-published chapbook, Shattered Emotions, Scattered Thoughts. Currently, Shaki G is publishing a full collection of her work, which promises to be a must-read for poetry lovers. You can pre-order this collection by going to her website, shakigpoetry.my.canva.site. You can catch her performing at open mics, workshops, and other events that allow her to connect with communities and share her passion for spoken word. You can find her Shaki G pretty much, I think, anywhere online. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it a big, big welcome to the second feature reader tonight, Miss Shaki G. Let's go to Soto. Let's go. Yes. Can I have the ability to share screen, please? As you wish. Thank you. Almost every website has an avatar. Allows you to become everything you wish you were. Me, lighter eyes, smaller chest, you, longer hair, hourglass. But if a solar flare decided to come here, Mike Tyson, our power grid, we would still be exactly who we are. Let's stop pretending to be something we're not. Love ourselves outside Avatar and Photoshop and make this world into what we imagined. All right. So uh, my first, well, I guess it would technically be a second piece. Uh, it's called Treehouse of Horrors. When I was a kid, my, oh, I'm sorry. What happened? Can you hear me? Yep, we got it. You're good. Oh, sorry. All right. When I was a kid, my stepfather swore he would build me a treehouse. He wasn't really my stepfather, just a man my mother loved, but the way he broke a promise felt a lot like chopping wood. So I believed him. You see, first, he said there wasn't enough wood, so I dragged home branches and pallets until the truth splintered my fingers. Second, he said he would teach me to do it myself, handed me a coping saw, but not a coping skill, so I learned how to cut myself long before I learned what to do with the pain. But I kept building, chanting, I am the architect of my own dreams. And when I stepped onto the makings of a floor, I learned what it meant to fall. Growing up, I never had a tree house in my backyard, just plywood reminders of how fragile dreams and promises could be. It's funny, Jesus' stepfather made him a carpenter and I wonder if he ever had a tree house in his backyard or if he learned how it felt to nail his hands to wood long before he was supposed to. The men our mothers love, leaving lessons in their sawdust smiles. And maybe we were the tattered tree houses they built, all broken home and weak foundation, reminders of how fragile dreams and promises can be. Uh, the second piece is called Rugburn Heartbreak. Once I was dragged across the living room floor, found Rugburn on my knees, 
pieces of fiber in the wounds, but also I left pieces of me behind in the carpet, blood and skin forever attached. And isn't this the perfect example of love, leaving pieces of each other in our pain? Eventually, our heart becomes a mosaic of everyone we've ever loved, rough edges made to look soft by your sandpaper saris. I like to believe I left your collage better than it was before, filling in all the missing pieces. Picture this, a living mural of what love should be, where pain is not the focal point. Maybe you and I were not in the right frame of mind or space and time, I know. Somewhere in this third stanza, this poem became a cliche, trying to make sense of heartbreak, as if love is easy to understand. I wish the only rug burns in my love came from making it, leaving pieces of us on each other's tongues. But now I can see him in your smile and my rug burn heart drags itself across the carpet, hoping to feel anything else. Um, so uh, with it being Mother's Day weekend, um, I read a lot about my mom. Uh, she passed back in 2011. Um, so I do have a few pieces um, that I've written about her that I'm gonna read uh, today. Some of them you may have heard. The first one is called Dental Records. When I was a teenager, my wisdom teeth found a way to gentrify my gum line. Screamed manifest destiny, pushed its way through and did not take no for an answer how violent some growth can be. When pulling the teeth, the dentist broke part of my jawbone, destroying what was left behind, but blaming the other teeth, standing around like project buildings claimed it was just a bad neighborhood. The tooth was never the problem. Sometimes I think my mother was a wisdom tooth. The pain I felt when she took up space, I never noticed she was only trying to grow until God, plucked her from the gums of my family's smile, replaced her with a frown, teeth slowly shifting, moving into her absence, leaving gaps. My family, bracing onto a memory to hold itself together. At night, I feel us grinding against each other, swallowing blood that tastes a lot like pride, biting our tongues as if we would drool apologies down our chins and we, would not be caught looking like an excuse. Blaming each other, standing around like cavities. Do not tell me we are just a bad set of dentures. The tooth was never the problem. Maybe if we had taken every brush with death and covered it in bacon soda and mint, we'd have kept the disease from destroying our mouths. What I mean is it doesn't matter if your family is a set of teeth or a forest of trees, just that you water and care for the roots. This one is called Inheritance. And this one is in my upcoming book. I used to think my mother left me nothing but grief when she passed. But lately, I'm realizing I inherited this heart of gold. How we be so broken, but still strong, like cracked sidewalk. The way we are, were always stepped on and stepped over when I was little. My mother would leave her heart on the edge of my bed, say she didn't know how to use it, right? I couldn't understand why she would want to put it on the curb with Monday's trash. Till I saw how my stepfather placed it there, stomped on it, how it still begged for him to stay, like home is where the heart is. So I was raised in a broken home, tornado of destruction. I have learned love like aftermath, like condemned building. I've wondered how anyone else could ever want this heart if not just a quick flip, a demolition. Stood at the pawn shop of your lips, bargaining, give me anything at all for this, trying to make you see its value. Took it home, polished it, made it shiny, praying you would give me yours in return. Then I saw him, he handed you diamonds and I can't blame you. My mother's pain, it seems I inherited that too. <clears throat> this one is called My Mother's Stoop, also in the book. 
Once, my mother told me she wanted to go back home to the same street she ran as a kid, somewhere in the Bronx or Harlem, sitting on the stoop with everyone she knew, breathing in the city like cigarette smoke, feel it barreling through her lungs like the sixth train. Says she missed those days. She made the journey back and found a different city than the one she left. The air, cleaner, stoops, empty, littered with memories of a past that no longer exists. She said her block felt like the graveyard where her past was buried. My mother, a ghost, knocking on doors looking for people who passed on. My mother, a, bo a bodega bacon, egg and cheese standing outside a new market, selling breakfast sandwiches with Chris Broschuto, says a city that never sleeps no longer has a heartbeat. So she can no longer call this place her home. My mother, a homeless woman with an address, can never go back home without a time machine. I wish I could give her the keys to a DeLorean so she can go back to the future she envisioned, the homecoming that never came. I tell her, it's okay. Home is where the heart is. She says, but what if the city was the first place to break her heart? She never truly got to pick up the pieces. When the heart lay scattered on a treasure map, too obscured to find, where then is home? How do you gentrify a memory? All right, she has one step. <clears throat> this one is just called Mother. I'm a late 80s baby. You should know what that means. My mother was a whisper in the midst of chaos, which is to say she was barely there. My mother wasn't too good with words, says she didn't know how to love, that I was one of her greatest creations and I was a mistake. But when she told me she loved me, it was the first poetry I felt her arms were Maya Angelou and Langston Hughes when she hugged me. Even the caged bird deferred its dreams. My mother was beautiful. A flower blooming in the midst of a brick lined street. Some would say she was a weed, but to me, she was a rose, a walking contradiction. My mother was both my everything and nothing to play with. She would stay, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry for. She was either a fortune teller or finally learned to keep a promise. What she didn't know is she would also become the reason I smile, my sanctuary on days when I outrun my demons, the quiet before the storm of thoughts circling my mind. My mother is missed time, proof that time is not equivalent to money, but a reminder that I do not have enough of either. My mother was a teacher. The way she made lessons of her actions with the disclaimer, do as she said, not as she did. A magician in the way she always hid her pain. My mother was always just a little bit too much for any space. Now she fills the space between my ribs. The reason I love too much and not enough. I guess you could say, I don't know how to love but I loved her. All right. Uh, and so this is the last piece I will do. Uh, it's called American Shame. This one is not about my mother. Um, this is a piece that I wrote recently and wanted to share. After an influx in shootings, Michigan schools are banning backpacks. They figure if children can carry the burden of America's shame, and they can carry their books. After all, most of the books have been banned anyway. This is what happens in a country afraid of its past. They hinge on the belief that children are the future. So they school to prison pipeline or class to casket them before they learn the truth. I was told the pen is mightier than the sword, but this poem has nothing on an AK-47 wrapped in the constitution. I don't give a fuck about an amendment when the men meant to protect us were treason like neckties, where the vote goes, where the check's high. It didn't have to be like this. I guess you save money on the coffin, the smaller it is. Call it an American discount. 
do anything to save a dollar and nothing to save a life. I've been expecting progress out of Congress, but I can't digest the inaction. It sits on my stomach mixes with grief until I throw up these poems and never throw up these hands. See, someone's got to fight for something. Maybe if I enter a school with a backpack full of protests, they'll listen. Thank you, guys. No, oh, thank you. Oh, thank my you, God, sir. let's go. Thank Damn. you. Yes. Uh, Let me get your mics, please. That was amazing, Chucky. This is how we do it. Phenomenal. Always, Chucky. Chucky, I'll give you a standing ovation. Yes. Wait, you guys read her book. You're going to freak out. It is so good. I can't wait to get it. Second that, Jane. uh, Very well done, Chucky. And and I, I, as as an aside, uh, I am very grateful for uh, you rocking the uh, necktie look tonight because you are uh, inarguably uh, rocking that look and you did uh, so well tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> um, and uh, my my website uh, is actually shockygpoetry.com. Uh, it's no longer than my Canva, just .com. Um, and you can uh, pre-order okay. my uh, book on there. Um, there's also links for donations if you want to donate to my flow um, or, you know, anything. Um, and there's merch. And I'll let you guys in on a secret because you came to the feature. I have no idea how to run a website. So there's no cart option on my website. So for the merchandise, you could put in whatever price you feel like you should pay for this merchandise and it'll take the price. It, it doesn't have a way to like you click on it and it puts the price of that item in. So if you see something on the site and you know you're feeling, you know, like maybe the twenty dollars I put on it isn't enough, you can put whatever price I put you you want. So if you only have ten dollars and you see something that's twenty dollars and you really want it, um, you could order it and I'll still send it to you. Just keep in mind that I do have to pay for my materials. So let's yeah, de- definitely call a customer service on that and <laughs> figure out. Yeah, to get it, get that done, right? Because like, uh, straight yeah, let's up, see how we can help that uh, out. Uh, uh, yeah, if anyone uh, is tech savvy with websites, uh, she unfortunately Shaki is a different website platform than mine, so I'm not familiar with it, and I'm not tech savvy at all. Um, but uh, yes, I, I, if there's a customer is service still, option, is it still on Canva or what's the platform now? Um, it's. It's technically on Canva, but I brought my domain through Square. So that's why, like, when you hit the other links, like, to pre-order my book, it goes through Square. The cart, it goes through Square? Mm-hmm. Not that much, but I can I can ask some folks. <laughs> I, I called Square. There, it's, there's no way to do it. You have to, like, oh. purchase a site like GoDaddy or something. And Yeah. Well, so, so I have GoDaddy for red or green books, and this is not they didn't pay for us to say this they're not sponsoring us yet or anything but i will tell you it was the cheapest option that i found when i initially launched the site it was the least amount of money to invest it it was very user friendly and easy uh i i believe for my store initially i had 10 items that i could post for sale um once i passed 10 then i had to actually pay extra every month to have a shop but it's as many items as I want to list. I think I, I have 150 items in the shop right now. Uh, Shaka G, uh, we're, we're going to talk about a, a, a collaborated poem, but I will tell you, I have a Square site too, but Square let me put the price in for the book and they had taxes. So I can send a link out. I will show you exactly how I did it. You don't have to have a website yet, but I'll show you how to make Square function. No, oh, I, so for my book, for my book, I do have a link. So when you click that, it's going to charge you the amount for the book. Um, but right. for the, my merch, I would have to click, make one for every single item, and I didn't want to do yeah. that. So okay. Yeah, yeah. Because so if you like make for every single item, it's you know it 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 works that way. So I got you. I got you. My bad. Well, well but thank, I thank you, you, I thank for, you for your words. Yeah, I I thank you for your words, Shaki. I I came here because uh, you invited me. Not you didn't have Prada. enough of us this not morning. Not because Prada did the show with me this morning. Not not because <laughs> I came here because you invited me, Shaki. <laughs> Thank you, AJ. Yeah, so definitely dip into dip into the pot of expertise in our community uh, because there's so many people who have done a lot of this uh, before, and hopefully we can 
um, do that. So Shockey G Poetry, S-H-O-C-K-I-E, the letter G, poetry.com. That is her website site that is where you can pre-order her book you can tip her this evening you can get her merch uh all of that stuff you do not want to miss getting the first wave of her books uh she'll sign them and send them to you i guarantee you it's going to be uh, possibly th these books are the best you're going to read this year uh i can almost guarantee you the best book that you will pick up and read came from red or green books this year uh the best book of poetry uh so so please 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 support these poets uh tip don't uh not tip if you have problems um using um the site just reach out to her she's shocky g pretty much everywhere and if you can't find her then reach out to us at the word is right we can put you in contact with her or have her contact you uh so th there's no reason why we can't be helping uh, these features with getting them tipped and getting the merchandise um, purchased and all that amazing stuff. If you go to redergreenbooks.com, you will see all the upcoming events, uh, the upcoming shows for the poets. Uh, the next big show is in June, and uh, we're going to be doing a readathon. So they're going to be reading from their book, and we'll be debuting the cover art. So it's a very exciting uh, show, and it's uh, everyone will be there. Uh, I just got word that everyone will be there. So it's super exciting. God is good. And then we'll have another one in August, a book signing uh, with the poets when they have their actual books with them that you can buy live, like as if we were in a bookstore and they were selling them, they'll sign them for you live uh, in the Zoom event. All right, let's go. Uh, so we have three more on the open mic tonight. We have Mark States, AJ Houston, and Jane Spoken Word. So like y'all don't go anywhere because the, the open mic is lit tonight. And don't forget, please, tomorrow night, same place, uh, Word is Right Zoom, not the same Zoom link, but the same place, same time. We have Jessica Helen Lopez from right here in Albuquerque, arguably one of the greatest Chicana poets in the world. I would I would go on a limb and say that she is sensational. Uh, so if you uh, would like to uh, watch her feature, it'll also be an open mic tomorrow night. Come back, get some more poetry. Uh, we're gonna rock it out. Uh, Mark, are you ready? Always. All right, AJ, you're on deck. Deck, not dick, deck. Thank you, Marissa. Mission imperfect. Your mission, Mark, if you choose to accept it. Our client, an unnamed greeting card company, needs four attempts to disassemble display shelves and racks at an undisclosed pharmacy in the Bay Area. Assemble and install in new displays then restock them. The business will be open, and it is of the utmost importance that you complete these tasks without interrupting their course of business, neither disturbing nor being noticed at all by the store's customers or staff. Do you accept this assignment? That's how temping was in those days. No submitting resumes, no three or four interviews, Agency calls, you accept or not, that's it. Good. Monday, 7 a.m., we'll call with address and whom to ask for. Monday, 8.50 a.m., four of us wait under tree 15 feet from the pharmacy entrance for our contact, Greg. Three men, one woman. Four somewhat introverted strangers stumbling through idle conversation, studying each approaching man as if a watch we were not sure still ticks. One of us clears throat. Greg will ask which one of us shall lead. I don't want to, but I've worked for them before and know what they want. We agree. Sounds reasonable. I like this modest man and sigh relief, worried Greg might have chosen me to lead the only white person among us. I do not need any authority, only the paycheck. Greg arrives, gives instructions, tells us to pile old shelving and greeting cards under the same tree, says he will return, drives away. The shelves in the store must have seen World War II and somehow survived the bomb blast. Plastic guardrails, half separated from wood already, shriek and groan like the Titanic taking on water and keeling over as we remove them. 
A constant stream of dust requires frequent sweeping of aisle. We could have finished this job in two days, but we had to remain aware of any customer walking in and being very, very quiet. If a customer approaches our aisle, we walk out the other end, find a place to stand like a mannequin until they leave. We say very little to each other, the four of us, aside from basic short requests, except for the woman who answers everything with, my husband says blah, 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 and the Bible says yada, 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 even when asked her name. So we code name her, my husband says. Only once a customer complains about our noise and dust. Although a twin of Aunt B from the Andy Griffith show, she sneers and scowls like a Klingon warrior. Pharmacy owner with twisted pretzel stick eyebrows tells us to wait outside until she leaves. We do not care. It is for us an extra half hour break. Thursday, 9 a.m., final day. Greg drops off new greeting cards to inventory, price tag, and stock, and an extra display rack. Two of us assemble the rack in silence, then awe at our work of art. Thursday, 10.45 a.m., it starts to rain. Boxes of new greeting cards are outside under the tree. We scurry to retrieve boxes. My back is turned, lifting a heavy box from sidewalk, and I hear a crewmate say, Daniel, will you look at that? The rain stops. Sun lights up the sidewalk. A woman steps out of her car, and the whole block has frozen in time to watch. She is Grace Jones Fine, or Nefertiti has returned in all her glory, and she knows it fine. Sunlight ricochets off her smile. She exudes confidence. She glances at her loyal subjects as she walks past each man, woman, even a dog on a leash. All except, my husband says, who grabs Lee Temp's arm with both hands like a crab leg she is trying to pry open. Do you see that white man staring at that black woman? She squeals several times. Lee Temp was in a trance, staring, and could not answer. Finally, he says, well, why wouldn't he? He's got eyes, too. She is beautiful. He's a good man. Did I tell you I liked him? Thank you very much. Let's go. And Rich made a statement, it was very true. Notice the care Mark takes in his inflections and voicing, uh, very proper. It's awesome. Thank you so much, Mark states. Uh, and and y'all feel free to drop your social links, your social links, your social media links in the chat uh, so you can find and follow each other. There are so many different people in this room right now. And I guarantee you, not all of us know and are following each other. Uh, so that will help. Uh, that'll help move that along. AJ Houston, I got you on the list. Uh, it is 7.07, no, 7.50 uh, my time. We're almost 12 hours back to the beginning of where we were this morning. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm excited to have AJ on my show. And then Jane will wrap us up after AJ. Okay, um, I'm just going to do a poem. It's my, uh, one of my favorite poems out of the Black Book of Black, my first Black Book. The Black Book of Black is uh, it's my my historical recollection of joining our present day to our arrival. So and that's the best description I can do. But the title of the poem is uh, "When My Ancestors Come." Some mornings, you 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 will not feel as though the day deserves your attention. No rebel, you'll not be welcome. Maybe fighting for daylight is the perfect beginning. You got to start somewhere earn your keep. 
Sitting on the birthday is not a given. See, we've had enough free breasts today. This nigga, he ain't got no more job in his voice. Fuck, Joby, you can't laugh at your funny. You don't laugh and keep from crying. I'm beginning to believe like Harriet's. She said she would have freed thousands more slaves if they only knew they were slaves. And I see you thinking walking free means you got some free. There's never been, nor would there ever be a line passing out some free, a free for the taking. You got to sacrifice something. The noose of knowledge must be too tight, choking out your common sense. I hear the chains rattling in your throat. See the cage and oxygen block you keep balancing your faith on. If you think you will someday stumble upon the truth, you better fall quick because ain't no truth here unless you're with you. Can't stay. Got somewhere else to be. All the rights and freedoms others died for are disappearing by the Constitution for. See this? <laughs> Man, this ain't important. This shit is life. And you think every time I speak over history, everything is a slave. See, in America, constantly fooling yourself. Keep telling the same lie till it's easy to swallow, till it tastes like truth. You can't see the picture while enjoying the pixels so gracefully colored in crayon, stepping back to get a better reading never across your mind. See, I wish you'd pick some cotton. I wish you knew how long it took for open lashes on your bare back to heal. Witness the hanging or still helpless watching the angry mob drag your wife, son, daughter, husband away. No, ain't no coming back. When these rights are gone, they ain't coming back. We didn't arrive here by choice and we still struggle to survive. That, that, shh, that hush in your mouth, it ain't survival. You've been frightened quiet. Too scared to open your mouth. See, there's always silence before a hanging, before a murder, before the corner arrives. I can hear your heartbeat from here, hoping you know what else to listen. Afraid of them satellites will spot you in the crowds. You can't fight sitting down, can't punch with your hands in your pocket with no pen in your hand with no paper to write on. You patiently thinking this is not your war, then whose is it if you don't fight for you? There's a long list of excuses we remember from textbooks years ago. Don't quite know when we got them, but we got them and we use them way too often. You may think this day can make it without you. It can, but you won't survive to dust. You're probably thinking, <laughs> this is just another slave form. Like, I'm not trying to help you, help me, help us. You got to do more than march against murder. Signs won't stop the killings. Posting camaraderie won't change the jail sentence. Won't even get the murders extended, vacations canceled. See, if this is a sla slave form, I, I think I just keep reading it till the ashes come to life. Until my ancestors come home, I bet they got some shit to say about this. They will see you constantly unconscious. Selling bullshit, trying to sell some t-shirts, talking about I can't breathe, forgetting the system, but then choking our ass for as long as we've been here, and we've always mattered to us. Ain't no slogan for fighting. Ain't no song gonna make us dance better. This ain't no ballroom. It's a slaughterhouse. They, they're killing in these streets. And you sitting, you sitting in the comfort of your house. I wish my ancestors, I wish my ancestors would come set fire to the long plaque in your bones so you could wake the fuck up and stop being so constantly unconscious. If this isn't a slave woman, uh, I think we'll be screaming in unison. We should all know the words by now before we all be wearing chains again, singing old Negro spiritual with the course of which you'll come in portrait venue and sing about how we gonna get us some free. Thank y'all for listening, appreciate it. Oh my God, that was That's dope. dope. Get his book, please. Like he has, AJ has a lot of books, but he has a new one that he just launched uh, this year. In fact, uh, Red or Green Books is going to have AJ uh, do a special workshop for only RGB authors, uh, which is uh, titled Taking Your Book on the Road. Uh, AJ had an incredible uh, release on his book where he he went, he spent two or three months on the road uh, with his book. Uh, so it's going to kind of be a download, you know, the things that he learned along the way, what he did, what worked, what didn't work, how he did it, why he did it, um, pouring into the next generation of, of poets. Uh, so we're just, we're super excited to have, to have him. And for those who don't have, uh, know AJ and I are, are also, uh, we have launched a Goodreads campaign. If you have a book on goodreads.com, please let us know. And the link, uh, we have the It's a collective uh, of an opportunity who has a bunch uh, of right, free, it's free to put your money out. We don't charge anything to do this, uh, but we're here to uh, get everyone. Our goal is to have everyone have 100 five star reviews on their book and to have the top five slots in Goodreads be poetry, the top 10 slots be books of poetry. I hope I didn't break up too much uh, as I was letting Terry Rose Jerson in the room. Welcome, Terry Rose. Uh, but yes, get your book on Goodreads. It's free. When your book is on Goodreads, then you send us the link. We'll send you the spreadsheet and everyone can leave everyone five-star reviews and uh, continue pushing each other up. All right. So I got uh, Jane's spoken word to wrap us up tonight. Unless Terry Rose Jerson wanted to read, I could put her on a squeaker in at the last minute. Otherwise, I have Lady Jane. 
uh, spoken word is going to wrap us up tonight. Are you ready, Jane? Oh, girl, I am always ready. <laughs> All right, you guys have been fired tonight. Thank you so much. It's been excellent. So my piece is called Winter Has Come to America. I turned on, tuned in, and dropped out in the 60s. You can call me a freak, but don't you call me a hippie. I spent the summer of love getting stoned and dropping acid. I protested a war that lasted and lasted. Released from the confines of society, sisters and brothers stood in solidarity for equality and dignity because you know we know. We demanded an end to war. Hell no, we won't go. We demanded civil rights and equal opportunity. We marched for all of humanity. And the music of my time spoke truth to power. Reuben the sly, the family took us higher. R-E-S-P-E-C-T demanded Miss Aretha Queen of Soul while Eve of Destruction sang dark truths untold. And while Dylan mourned, we're just a pawn in their game. By any means necessary, Malcolm X proclaimed. I'm black and I'm proud, testified James Brown. As Jimmy lamented, why'd you burn your brother's house down? And as Marvin sang, mercy me, when will it end? John Lennon pleaded, give peace a chance. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, rhyme the greatest of all time, my hero, Muhammad Ali. We were a social movement, youth on the rise, in a war for equality and respect for all lives. The women's movement defined our objectives. Feminist ideology demanded equality of sexes. The Latino movement of United Farm Workers Unions improved farmers' pay and working conditions. The Chicano movement organized students. Education, not eradication, brought basic school improvements. The Black Arts movement used art as a weapon. The Black Power Movement championed pride and freedom. Angela Davis, Eartha Cat, Woman Kit, Nichelle O'Hora Nichols, Tommy Smith, John Carlos, Nina Simone, and still, and still, and still idiocracy reigns. If you are other in America, do you do time every day? If you are other in America, is it a squeeze play? Living your life on an everyday beat, always on guard, avoiding white heat. Winter has come to America. We have been trumped. White is blindly stumbling through life, feasting on Fox, feeding his white. He's scared, scared you'll take his guns, his God his whiteness, so he hides his fright in distorted righteousness, marching with tiki's of frightening aberration. Rivers of blood stain our dawn with damnation. What happens to one happens to us all. Like dominoes, we all will fall. Silence is death. Oh my God, let's go. Unmute your mics, please. Give it up for Jane's spoken word. Woo! Well let's done. Go. Let's go. Thank you for having me. Well done, Jane. Unbelievable. And I uh, appreciate the shout out to Nichelle Nichols uh, as well. Absolutely. What a, the what a wonderful. Those are the people of my time. Those are the, the music that I grew up with. The, you know, I've seen more jail cells than I care to. I've seen more blood and people running from cops than I care to. And I'm afraid that we're going back there. So I'm too old to run, but motherfuckers, I can write. 
Let's go. Let's go. Jeez, motherfuckers, I get right. Yes. Uh, that is what we could do as poets. For sure, we could keep keep poeting. Uh, welcome, Rachel Steele's in the house. Another New Mexico poet here tonight. Welcome, welcome. Uh, hey, Dee Allen you. is in the room. What's up, D. Allen? Well, Lady Jane was wrapping us up tonight, but I will uh, offer it if either of you would like to um, contribute a piece before we close the room down. I will let you have it, or we can uh, call it. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel? Would you, would you like to share? Sorry, it was breaking up. Were you um, asking me? I want to make sure it's not like my computer freezing. So, so okay. Well, so we have Terry Rose, D. Allen, and Rachel. The three of you came in uh, at the end. Would any of you like to read uh, before we close out tonight? Okay. I, I see D. Allen would like to read. Terry Rose. I was gonna do a screen share and and do three haiku. Okay, so we'll have Terry Rose and then Dee Allen. And Rachel, did you want to share? Yeah, I'll go ahead and share. All right, so we'll so we'll go Terry Rose, Rachel, and then Dee Allen. And that's just the order in which you three arrived in the room. So that's how we'll do that. And so we'll wrap up with Dee Allen tonight. All right, Terry Rose, go for it. You should have share screen capability. This is my hedgehog. Can you hear me? Yes, we have you. This is my hedgehog um, drawing um, because I did a thing on hedgehogs uh, for uh, Finn Hall's uh, Blot from the Blue uh, last month. And then I got a request from Michael Sindler to, when I sent him one of my books, to have a picture of a hedgehog, to draw a picture of a hedgehog. So I did it. And then I did, um, these are the haikus that I also went along with the thing. Springtime looms in air. He will bark to challenge you. Don't touch my honey. Please don't pet me or risk getting a spike or two. When I hiss, back off. You may hear me quack. I want you to feed me, but I have to know you. And that was titled How to Communicate with a Hedgehog. Awesome. And I love the drawing and you and Terry Rose is an incredible artist. Uh, she did that drawing. So yes, thank you so much, Terry Rose. Super cute. The, all the great things that we can do in this poetry community, right? Um, Finn's workshops are great. So if you are not um, if you're not going to, to different workshops or part of different people's uh, platforms, then get on their platforms and go to these workshops. Uh, Terry Rose is part of the uh, 2022 debut poets and her book has, has a bunch of drawings, um, photographs, uh, found poetry in it. It's, it's a brilliant book. She's an incredible artist. And that is the uh, cover of her book that you see on the tile uh, here in the Zoom room. All right, Rachel Garcia, all the way from New Mexico. We have like six New Mexicans in the room tonight. I'm super excited. And then, uh, and then Dee Allen will wrap us up tonight. Sorry I came in late. I just completely spaced it. And my mind's all over the place. All right, can everybody hear me? All righty, this one's called Tiny World. One little boy fighting in a great big world, feeling like he's all alone, but little does he realize this is a world that he can conquer. He's scared and feeling two feet tall in a world that could swallow him whole. Yet he fails to realize that he's much greater than his big, great big scary world that is his to dominate. He looks around and even though he's surrounded by many that love him, he still feels alone. He's nervous, he's scared. And although he's trying to survive in a world that scares him, his anxiety is sky high simply by feeling all alone in a world full of people. His, little, his body is little, his heart is big, his mind is big, his worries are big in this great big world. He's fighting battles that many don't know and although some do know, they fail to see he's fighting his own battles deep down and in his head, feeling lost at sea. Sweet little boy, please see that mommy is here right by your side to hold you close, to hold you tight. You're not alone in, the great, in this great big tiny world. You see my son. This world is yours and it's mine, and together we'll conquer this tiny world. Oh, 
Rachel. Yes, and happy early Mother's Day, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, I hope my New Mexico peeps can make it down on Sunday. We're going to be at Juno Brewery. I have a full feature set that I'm going to be doing down there, uh, 5 to 8 p.m. So for those of you who are here locally, Sunday night, just come down and hang out with me. Uh, that would be awesome. Yes, Rich. What was the date of that? Sunday in two days. Gotcha. So that would be the 14th. Sounds good. OK. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a great event. All right. So uh, don't forget tomorrow night right here, uh, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, Jessica Helen Lopez will be here. Uh, so come back for the open mic, uh, single feature tomorrow night because she, she, she don't need it. It's just, she's amazing. Like I, I couldn't put anyone with her. I'm like, let's go. Uh, she's she's uh, spectacular. So get your butt back here tomorrow night, uh, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, right back here. Not the same Zoom link, different Zoom link, uh, but but we'll be having another event. All right, G. Allen, please take us home. It's been four months since I last performed here. I don't know if I could follow what went on before with Jane's spoken word, but I'm going to try. From Written Tales Magazine, this is a free verse poem called Overcome. Try as devil's might to change the look of the big picture passing itself off as democracy. They can't remove us all. For the longest time they have used abandonment, brutality, criminalization, displacement, enslavement, force-fed false history, gentrification, harassment, intoxication, jokes told, spite and disguise, Ku Klux flaming cross night rides, lust toward our girls and women, mass murder, negation of our views or police intimidation, Queen's African beauty devalued, religion, Christianity passed down by pilgrims, sterilization, Terrorism, unity broken, vicious discrimination, white imperialism, X out credit for our contributions, youth kill before age 25, Z, last letter, last considered, first targeted, all the tricks implemented on us, and yet our people are still mating, our women are still breeding, our people are still here, our culture is still here. We have overcome, endeavors by devils to whittle our number to nothing. We have overcome. It's been a long, arduous walk on the road to progress. Reacting to muscle memory, hurtling over obstacles we didn't design over time. We look forward to thriving in the next 400 years and what they may bring. We look forward to days of joy, seeking pleasure we deserve. Not to forget about oppression, but to surmount oppression before it regains ground to conquer spirit. By having the best times of our lives, be loud, be lively, be talented, because they can't silence us all. We have overcome, and whenever possible, we'll do it again. Overcome. For Raul James, Lantern Carrier, Safongo, Zoncanto, Elemental, Midnight, Rose Gold, Stacy Artist Dyson, and English protest poet and artist, Zeta Holoborn. Overcome. From this mic to your ears, I'm D. Allen. Yeah, Thanks for D. listening. Glad to be back here. Yes! Yeah, D. Yes! Let's go, D. Allen. Oh, man, that guy, he just riles me up every time I hear him. I love him. Uh, he has uh, been a feature here, Word is Right. You can go back to the video archives and watch a full set from him, too. Like, let's go. Oh, my God. Uh, thank you, D. Allen, for rolling through. I'm so glad anytime you come uh, back to the Word is Right. Four months are too damn long. Too damn long. Let's go. You, you need to come back, like, more often. I need my D. Allen fix. All right, uh, so uh, let's do this. Let's uh, let's everyone unmute. 
and give a huge round of applause to our, our feature readers tonight. We have Rita Zahir and Shocky G. Let's go, features. Oh, I yes. miss Shocky uh, G. I miss Shocky yes, G. Go back and watch it. She it was an incredible set. Uh, both of these women were just incredible. Uh, go back. It's live streamed and it, it's on uh, the Word is Right's Facebook page. We'll we'll upload it to the YouTube channel as well. But more importantly, or most importantly, their books are available to pre-order, right? The, the, get their books, get your get your $15 and go buy your Dane book because uh, it, it is so important for these debut authors to, uh, to be getting their work out there and for the community to be loving on them and supporting on them as their books launch. Not to mention the fact that they are out of control, crazy, awesome authors and artists. So uh, you just feed your brain, buy a poetry book, uh, buy two, buy one from each of them. I mean, you think about, you think about it, $30 for two books that are going to change your life, that are going to give you uh, way more than one hour of, of any sort of um, feeding yourself and pouring back into yourself. So, so just go do it, go do it for you. Mm -hmm. um, go buy extra copies and give them away. I promise you, you won't be sorry. These books and, and these women are just they're coming with it this year. I just want to so, say So anyways, let's go. Yes, Shaki. I just want to say I'm not trying to like uh cheat anybody. She says $15, but it's 20 cuz of shipping. So that's why yes. it's $20 on the side. <laughs> yeah, the books are but but see the books are only $15, right? If you yes, you y'all got to pay for shipping. Uh but I promise you uh that it will be worth it for you. Uh let's go. All right. Uh so Shaki G post uh, uh, the Raw Poet, R-A-H. Y'all got to get involved with these women. Uh, they're just spectacular. Let's do a quick cheers. I'll see you back tomorrow night for Jessica Helen Lopez. Uh, if you've got a glass or a drink or something, I will do you my very well awesome goodbye toast. Here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry bad thoughts to refrain. For we may or may not ever all be here again. This has been the Red or Green Books and Word is Right's double feature open mic with Rita Zahir and Shaki G, the poet. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. We'll see you tomorrow night. Peace. Happy Mother's Day. Have a good Happy one. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Rachel. Maybe we're not like leaving quite yet because I have to mm -hmm. get my other computer. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day.